what's up guys and welcome back so today i'm gonna be showing you guys how i actually ran through my first labyrinth and how i farm it farming is more to the end but that's after reset and stuff so look forward to that first off i did take guild thunder because we just use him as like a sacrificial lamb for beating the blue lizards at the end of floor one i basically just hit left side and go straight up i'm gonna try to get like three units and try to get them the highest level i can you're gonna take you're gonna need to take green units so any green dps's that you can find is worth it here and should be prioritized i think just for this phase you can literally swap them off from floor two so just for beating her it's worth it some good green units are probably like roxy brunhild droll works decently droll's actually kind of mvp because he at the time i did not really pay attention much but he actually seals their ults which comes in handy a lot of the times because it stops them from like getting a free kill which is pretty nice I weren't like really focusing on getting my super awakening stars yet I was just trying to get my units in place and actually made a little bit of a mistake with that because I was trying to get like at least four stars but I ended up just getting two so I just took what I had best and just pushed my level a little bit more but that costed me like two super awakening so you can correct this in your run should not be a major problem also the main team you're gonna be like focusing to build for end game for this is a mild squad but the thing is on your first run i think you should just focus up on actually just getting through it and trying to get some mail himself that's what you want to focus like try to get that's your goal just trying to get mail at this point once you get him you can like try to reset build your farming team and move on from there so not too much of a rushed method Like for this fight, the reason you want Gil Thunder is he's just going to be, he is the one that's going to be focused. If you can get two blue units, you know they're going to be targeted first and your green unit is the one that's going to be killing. But having two green units mean you just tank a little better. As the, the advantage and disadvantages perks are a little bit better for this. So there is that. So you can that's why you kind of have to pay attention to it for like flow bosses as you see brunhill does crazy damage to this yeah we barely did not kill but it's fine we actually tank these pretty neat pretty easily Yeah, I just wanted to finish up with Joel here to see if I could get like a little bit of lifesteal, but he does not have any, sadly. Floor one went down pretty easy. Like, but keep in mind, I do know I at this point I did know what I'm doing because I did play this on JP. So when this came to global, I already had like a good idea of what I'm what I should be doing. Like, if you want, you could go for extra shop or passive. It's up to you, really. People would say, like, certain sides is better. It's up to you what, you, what you're trying to find, I guess. And since you're getting, like, the first two picks, like, Gil Thunder being dead, you don't need to revive him as well. Like, he's a unit you're going to be dropping instantly. So it does not even matter if he's alive or not. For these units, I kind of wished like some goddesses would start showing up because there's a chance for Tarmiel, 
and yeah tarmiel was in this pick here by the way i that was pointed out to me because i did this live and i missed him i literally ignored tarmiel the blue one i was just looking for red tarmiel and like margaret did not find either so i straight up just just left him <laughs> that was pointed out to me like way way later though and I, I practically did not even see him ended up taking like arthur here just because we need red units for stacking against floor two boss which is green merlin so there is that also scotty scotty is a red unit that works pretty good against her like she kills very easy and she removes buffs as well so that actually helps with that like her in general luckily i'm not like super hyper focused into building a goddess team yet so i'm just trying to like get through it see if i can get to floor three get my l and reset it that's the main focus of your first run And then these passes, you can basically take something that helps you out. If you get something pretty good along the way, just take it. But most of these passes don't really help that much. So you can really just take whatever. I think I just take I just took like strength attack. Yeah, I did. And SA Super Awakening is a huge thing. Like, I think I just fell short on like Super Awakening from missing my first set of stars. I'm, I was just like laid back. Yeah, and these teams are gonna have like no problem clearing these through. So you don't have anything to really worry about there. You should be fine on all fronts. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to like be picking levels anywhere after like the first floor because killing all of these are going to give you a decent level boost and you should hit max like by the time you hit for last boss which is Gother. So there is that. I think trying to get SA6 is probably like a better focus and any passage you can pick up on the way that gives you extra damage it will help a ton so make sure to hyper focus those instead of like the tanky ones which makes you like just stick around longer it does not make sense better to just take something that makes you do more way way more damage merlin force fight now like i was thinking she would be more of a problem for this team yeah i was thinking she's just gonna go straight into like one of them kill him probably freeze like two units but she actually just freezes one unit which is very nice and i have three cards for scotty and we just do crazy damage Like Scotty just goes in and Merlin can't ult because I still have Droll. And look at that damage. I think that's the first time I've ever killed her like this. Like without on my first round without like my L. Like th I think that's the first time I've ever done that. So floor two went down pretty easy as well not that hard floor three there's a there's a good amount of stuff in here so that's what i say you don't need to like push levels super fast you uh, from just clearing these floors you're gonna hit level 100 pretty easily so just make sure you get passives that that help you to get further in with your attacks or if you if you're not getting if you did not get my l you can try to get someone that that will help you clear faster on your next run so you can get my l on the on your second or third run i guess but i did end up getting lucky 
and I pretty much just got my L instantly which was insane for me because he just shot me straight through the rest of the floor and the boss was not how should I say I think I made a slight mistake in my last choice for a unit and that costed me a little bit but from the time I got my L it was like done and dusted we already are set once we beat for three boss we can reset and get straight into farming anyway like getting the passives done and just going straight into it Yeah, I'm already level 90, level 92. It's like you start, you're getting levels pretty fast. So, getting the levels is is like a waste. Getting the essays should be your main focus. Any angel passes you get would be pretty nice you don't need a lot of defensive ones but any attack ones if you can get like the attack you get like a hundred percent attack stats that would be nice like just for a starter and then you reset and see if you can stack one more that's all you need to completely farm everything and i think they have a higher chance to drop on like the ending yeah like these this is where they're likely to drop from these last shops so make sure and save a decent amount of coin for these shops this is a defensive one i ended up taking because the only goddess one that i've that i've gotten since like thus far and i'm buying sa just trying to push through Now for this shop, I kind of, there was like a debate we had going on. Like who should I choose for this spot? Uh, the main two choices was Escanor and Liz. We ended up taking Liz because I had the defensive buff, like for goddesses. But I think I ended up regretting that decision because it, this is what, this is why I'm saying you don't want to pick something that gives you more defense than straight out of, straight out attack because just because i had pretty low attack i ended up taking a bit longer on gother that i needed to and also Esquinar had like his his three turn immunity right so he could do attacks every three turns which i thought i think now that after i've already done it he was the better choice you could have killed way way faster with him so just this uh there's some food for thought if you're playing this through because now it's like fighting Gother, he's gonna be attack ceiling a lot and it's constantly just buffing himself up this was like a red one long long painful fight for me because we would not get any like a lot of clear spots where we could just go in and do damage and stuff so that's where i think i felt short if i had picked Escanor, we would have like every three turns to do damage and probably kill because he is pretty squishy you just need to not be attack sealed which he and he just keeps doing he spams that out like it's nothing so one thing you gotta look out for for this stage like his damage is not insane as well but once he's buffing up and he's attacking he's gonna whittle your team down so if you don't have margaret 
someone like Eskner could help. Pushing ults for me kind of did not help much either because <laughs> my ult, my ult gauge is only at 2 6, so we don't do like crazy amounts of damage. And look, the amount of buffs he is stacking, so where he is gonna like whittle us down. Like, no lie, I think this fight alone took like 10 plus minutes, maybe just. It, well, it felt like that in the moments, for sure. sure this is where it all changed well she wasn't the attack sealed so we could actually kill kinda it was pretty close but we didn't actually just comes in we kill and this is how i cleared my first first labyrinth like the just the complete floor three runs this is what i did like that's how it it took me what i did not reset we took one straight run and did it and in my second run i actually like fully built my farm team already because i kind of got lucky in the ending with like passives so we did get a bit lucky in the ending. For okay. I'ma show you the passives I'm working with for my current farm team. So you can see how easy it is. Cause I actually already farmed out the shop completely by the time I'm posting this. So my passes are not are not the best, but they're pretty good. Okay, so my squad was Mile, Ludo, Liz, and Melly. We ended up coming out with crit resist, crit chance, some basic stats for goddesses, and two increased attacks. So 175% increase to goddess team. And this completely shreds all of these bosses. Like, they literally do crazy damage. Like, Mael does a lot. And I think in one of the shops coming down to the ending of this, I would end up picking up Tarmiel. And then Tarmiel single target does a lot of damage as well. So, I can't actually, I'll actually leave in all the ending boss fights. So you can see them and how fast I go through them. It's pretty simple how I farm this. Like my mile does a lot of damage once you build it up to this point. So you just start back, rerun it, and you get him. Get the passives that you are looking for. Reset it. And move on, basically. Because these at this point, you're just one-shotting all of these bosses with like two cards. And farming out the shop. So it's not going to really be holding you back. Which is pretty nice. That being said guys. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps in some way. And I'll see you guys in the next one.